Okay, so hello everyone. Good afternoon. So nice to see you all on a Saturday. Um, my talk will be brief and short and very direct to the point. So hopefully, um, after learning about a little bit about multimodal um, HCI, it could actually give you some ideas moving forward to like on the projects that you'd be working on and maybe right just maybe some of the choices that you actually um do will be like yeah creating something which is similar to what yeah jason actually did and monique and their team right it's actually very nice application um as long as um, it doesn't have to be complex but if it does have a very big impact and that will actually be very very good okay so I'm given like, yeah, almost 30 minutes perhaps, but I'm quite sure I'll be done within the same time as what Jason actually delivered like in around 20. So that's okay. Yep. Okay. So, yep. So um, the topic that I'm going to be delivering today is all about an computer interaction okay i know that in your semester a majority of this audience that are actually here are in their first semester in uni right and if i'm not mistaken you're actually taking human computer interaction course it, the hci course previously for your seniors it was called like multimedia and human computer interaction okay so this is pretty much related to that same course Okay, so pretty much supposedly Bagus should be delivering this talk, right? But yeah, in his behalf, okay, I'll be talking about this because I pretty much worked on this topic for the past three years. So um, I work with your seniors, starting from Cindy, which is like Binushan 2019, and then Rehigita, Binushan 2020. And the last one is Fia Faustin which is Pinushan 2021. So we conducted the research on multimodal HCI, and I'm going to be showing you what we did. And at the same time, the technology that we used to actually experiment on a certain framework. But of course, we need to know what multimodal HCI is, or um, in short, multimodal interaction. So this is not pretty much new to you guys. What the, the app that Jason and his team created previously is already involving multimodal HCI. Okay, so as per definition, it says it's a situation where the user is provided multi, uh, with multiple modes for interacting with the system. So these modes are pretty much called modalities, right? So, um, there are actually two types of interaction in regards to um, multimodal HCI. The first one is, of course, yeah, it's either computer to human and human to computer. Okay, so for for computer to human, this is actually uh, what helps the computer understand what the user wants. So pretty much, it actually relies on vision, your gaze. Um, Hearing, I mean, you use your and some tactile abilities such as like what touch and vibration and all of those things, right? So a few examples could actually be like computer graphics, audio playback, phone vibrations, haptic and tactile feedbacks. Now for um human to computers, it's pretty much um. We actually rely on various mechanisms to communicate. Um, we've been doing this for quite some time already, right? We use a keyboard to actually communicate with the computer. We use a mouse, right? Touch screens, track. Uh, easier accessibility, right? And there are even more complex examples, such as your accelerometers, gyroscopes um correct me if i'm wrong jeremy did you use gyroscopes for your app uh yeah basically from the phone okay very good right and 
also magne magnetometers which actually help with motion detection so um pretty much uh, some research work has already been done by your seniors one of the earliest um, multimodal HCI that was developed by one of your seniors was this magnetometer. Okay, so pretty much your phone is actually equipped with it, um, but it is not widely used as a means for communication. Agree? Pretty much you actually use what? The touch, you use your acceler accelerometers, your gyroscopes. However, for the magnetometer, it's like not many people are actually um, using its full potential. Maybe they just use it for what? Compass, right? If you use a compass app, it actually uses the mag magnetometer so that it um, actually points to the north. So what your senior actually did was quite fun. So he, cre he created a ring, which is a magnet, right? The ring is pretty much a magnet. And then it actually... He uses his phone and to, he uses the magnet to interact with the phone. And the funny thing that he created was it was a game wherein you need to punch the face of the lecturer. So just keep on punching until it, the lecturer gets beaten up. <laughs> that was pretty much just it. And it was, it was fun. It was nice, right? Okay. So we, we get to mess up with the faces of our colleagues, right? Because you could snapchat the photo and then put it in the app and then you could just punch it all the way until that's it right so it's pretty fun okay so um these are pretty much the two types of uh, multimodal hci now the other one is there there's actually two modes one is what you call sequential mode wherein of course the users need to switch between modes of interaction but they cannot do it together okay it's just like one after the other. The other one is called simultaneous, which actually allows the user one mode at a time to interact with the system. Um, for sequential multimodal, it's pretty easy to um, create. However, for simultaneous multimodal, it's a little bit tricky. And that is the, uh, the main focus of the research that we actually work on uh, for the previous years. I hope that some of you will gain interest and contact me soon, perhaps, and we could actually try continuing the work that we've already started. Okay? Right. So, okay, these are just some examples, right? So, it's pretty much um, we interact with the computer and the computer perceives it as what? Okay? So, it actually sees it as case i mean sorry we interact using our eyes for example of course it's vision and then um we talk then of course audio is actually being used direct touch most likely vibration gestures okay or maybe facial expressions proxemics and this one's a new one right smell okay so pretty much this is actually one of the things that we're will be looking into in the future, okay? We seldom communicate with our computer using the sense of smell. Any app actually uses the sense of smell. It's quite difficult, right? Yeah, I haven't actually um, thought of it as well, but yeah, I mean, this one would actually be challenging. We should have a special sort of sensor for our phones, right? <laughs> to be able to identify the scent, the scent of something. Okay, so, yep, um, just some examples, right? Like graphical user interface, which actually relies on our vision to interact, sorry. And for example, right, if you're accessing the website or a digital billboard, for example. And then um, you've got like voice interface, which actually relies on pretty much auditory capabilities. Okay, so this actually includes what? Um, the voice assistants, such as Alexa, Google Assistant, or Siri, depending on what the unit that you're actually using. Also, in addition, you have haptics, right? Gestures and motion rely on our perception of touch. So these are what you call your tactile abilities. So they trigger an interaction, 
Okay, so you receive a message, let's say for swiping left or skip a song, for example, right? Um, what is that app that, act, that you actually use wherein you need to shake the phone to see if there are people nearby? Or you shake the phone to delete a certain word or something. Have you ever used that app? Not yet, yeah. Yeah, I guess it's not so popular here. Maybe in China. Um, WeChat, I guess it's WeChat. WeChat is the one that you actually um, need to shake your phone so that you would be able to like search for other people that are actually using the same application. Okay, so those are very what simple applications. However, yeah, it's, it's making something. Okay, so um, if you might ask, where is it used? It's pretty much everywhere, right? Most of the general applications on smartphones are MMI, such as like what Google Maps, your browsers inbuilt application on smartphones pretty much everywhere so even if you're playing games right so if you have let's say for example a nintendo switch and you're playing breath of the wild for example the very first um game that i played on a switch and it was really nice so you use your controller to actually like what um trigger an event right so first you use the gyros to position the where your bow is actually going to point to, and then you click on a button so that it actually fires an arrow. That's already multimodal human computer interface, right? Your smartphone, I mean, sorry, your smartwatches, pretty much the same thing, right? So um, most of your daily gadgets are actually capable of handling these interactions already. So starting from your desktops, laptops, smart TVs, thermostats, IoT devices and etc. Right? It's also pretty much being widely used right now in manufacturing, in health domains, automobiles, construction, enterprise solutions, embedded systems. Pretty much, uh, it's very much widely used. However, yeah, um, the development of which is um, most of the things that we're developing right now is actually with gearing to what ubiquitous computing as we call them right so we develop apps pretty much not just for the desktop anymore but for what small gadgets and what electro um, consumer electronic products as well right so that's the reason why okay um, um jason mentioned a while back that you had a seminar workshop regarding or creating a smartphone on a budget, right? So that's already one complex application of what? Multimodal interface, right? Okay, so moving on, oops. Okay, I'd like to show you the earliest multimodal interface that was created. Imagine that, 1979. So a team of, um, developers or yeah they're still students from MIT actually created an app called put that there so it's a voice and gesture interactive system so without further ado let me display it and let's watch it together oh wait can I share the audio can everybody hear it create a yellow circle there. Create a cyan triangle there. Put a magenta square there. Create a blue diamond there. Move that there. Put that there. Move that below that. Move that west of the diamond. 
create a large green circle there. Oh, shit. Sorry about that one. Restart. Okay. So, this was actually one of the very first um, applications that was created. So, if I would like to ask you, with your the technology that you're actually that you actually have right now, right? Would you be able to develop something like this? Most likely, your answer would be yes. I'm quite sure about it. It's going to be coming like easy, sir. Right? There are a lot of APIs available already. There are a lot of like um, gadgets that we could actually use. Got it? So if you have your Oculus Quest, right? Or you have your HoloLens, um, pretty much very easy to actually um, create this app already. So imagine how time actually flies, right? This was like in 1979. And you were born like what, 2003? Right? Okay, so young minds, great minds. Okay, so moving on. A little bit of background of what I'm actually trying to say is like, humans have many ways to communicate, right? We actually talk, we give gestures, right? We touch, and as a result, the communication between humans actually happens very seamlessly, most of the time. That is, right? If we're not actually misunderstanding some thoughts, then most of the time, it actually happens seamlessly. A little bit of wink, and you know what I mean, right? Got it? So human-to-human -human interaction, it's actually very easy. And very straightforward, of course. I mean, from the day we were born, we actually, we actually learn how to communicate, right? But communication between humans and machines actually require more formality, okay? Because talking to a machine or communicating to a machine, we actually need to let the machine learn and understand what we're actually saying, right? Pretty much when you start learning your very first programming language, you act, we actually talked about what? Translators, compilers, interpreters, right? The voice that I'm actually speaking right now, the computer doesn't understand it. Not unless I convert this analog signal into digital form, in the stream of what? Bits, series of zeros and ones. And that's the only time the computer could be able to understand it and then give me some feedback, right? So it's pretty much not straightforward. So a lot of people actually started working on ways on how to, what? How are we able to develop something and um, be able to communicate with the computer? So if you are interested, let's say, in implementing modality, then these are actually the things that you need to know. These are just four. Maybe there are more, but at the minimum, at least, should at least know these four. First is, you should know how to process inputs from different heterogeneous streams. Got it? Meaning, if I have inputs from heterogeneous streams, I could input using the keyboard. That's text, right? I could input voice and then convert it into what? We have like text to speech and those things, right? And then I could actually input gestures and then convert these gestures into what? Something that the computer could understand, right? Next thing that we need to know is the coordination and integration of several communication channels, got it? That operate in parallel. Okay, so if you were to develop, let's say, for example, um, the da uh, from the dashboard of the car, right? So pretty much you have, um, let's say, yeah, touch screen. You could have gesture interface. You could have voice or maybe even equip it with a camera so that the facial expression could be detected, for example, right? So pretty much the cars right now, I mean, if you're actually driving, 
you actually prefer to use voice. Got it? But if your car is parked, then pretty much you prefer touch into the um, interface that you're actually using. So the next one is, of course, partition of information that sets across several output modalities for the generation of efficient multimodal presentations, which is, of course, fission, as they call it. And yeah, this never gets old, right? Dealing with uncertainty and recognition errors. Okay? So there was this guy that actually came up with some sort of a framework when it, when it comes to developing multimodal human computer interface. Guess it's her name. Yeah, she's a girl. Her name is Oviat, O-V-I-A-T-T. And she came up with this framework. Okay. So this is a typical framework information flow for speech and gesture multimodal interface. And it was implemented as a research for a game. Okay. So um, notice that you have your input analyzers here. So the player actually interacts using two different um, inputs, gesture and speech, right? So pretty much your gesture is in an, um, analog and speech is in analog as well. So it needs to be interpreted so that the computer could be able to understand. Of course, for gesture, you have gesture interpreters and for speech, you have language processing. Okay, now the output will actually be the integration between speech and gesture. So at least while you're trying to play the game, you could actually switch between speech and gesture as well. Okay, and this is um, what we actually tried to work on with your seniors. This part, okay. Because the issue is actually with regards to the integration, right? Because if I'd like to ask you uh, the speed of, let's say, for example, interpreting voice compared to gesture, pretty much the speed on how the computer actually interprets it, there's always a discrepancy, right? It's always a discrepancy. It's not always like, okay, it's balanced and that. Actually, tried looking into going to fix or at least diminish the problem of integration. So it was a thesis work, thesis work from Cindy to Rigita and to Fiu. Now, notice the trend all girls, yeah. So it's pretty much, I don't know, maybe they're more into HCI compared to others. But yeah, pretty much so far, I've, I've, I've worked with all of them. And all of them, all of their research, actually, we created the paper and submitted it into a conference. And it was presented already, which is very good achievement if you're a student, right? Certainly as, let's say, your third year or maybe your second year, you're already publishing research work and being known in the community, that's actually very good, okay? So now um, the thing that I'd like to tell is, okay, do we still have time? Okay, still good, right? Um, so with regards to integration, of course, we need to know what technology we're supposed to use. Now, what available technologies do we have at business? Previously, we only have the leap motion. Have you ever heard of leap motion before? Not yet. And we used, okay, um, the next slide will actually tell a little bit about what leap motion is. And then the Orion SDK. Um, Unity was used by Rigita, but not Cindy. Cindy actually used the Orion. And Rigita and Fio used Unity. Okay, now for the, this leap motion was actually used for gesture. And then for um, the speech recognition, we actually use Google's 
very, very nice to use Google Speech API. And of course, programming of choice, our favorite Python, right? Do you agree? Your favorite programming language is Python? Yeah, you, it becomes your favorite after you take um, data structures and analysis of algorithms, right? Because you don't want to program in C or C++. <laughs> okay, but pretty much these are the technologies that we use. So a little bit of description, right? The, the leap motion is a motion sensing technology for HCI. It's designed for hand gesture and finger position detection. So you could actually look it up, how it looks like and how it works. If you'd like to borrow it, yeah, you could borrow it from us. We have two leap motions available, although one leap motion is still with feel and she hasn't returned it yet, but we do have it, okay? And we use Google Speech API, okay? So it actually just converts spoken text into written text directly, Python strings. So it's very easy to use, la, right? And, and we also use PyPy library for performing speech recognition with support for several engines, APIs, both online and offline. So if you're interested in working on multimodal HCI, we have the facilities. Yep. We have our Oculus. We have our HTC um, goggles. So pretty much available for all of you guys. But yeah, we don't have like three or four Oculus Quest. Yeah, I guess we only have one. One from CS, one from graphics design and so on. So we can actually share, right? So these are some opportunities. Okay, oh, okay, there's a question here, sir. Is this the same as Connect? Pretty much similar to Connect, Rehan, but it's a very small device. It should actually fit in your pocket. Okay, so these are some opportunities to you, for you to look forward to. Yeah, most often now we actually use or work on what extended reality, right? So extended reality is pretty much just the umbrella of augmented reality, virtual reality, and mixed reality. So these technologies integrate virtual and real world components. I guess for your app, Jason, you actually used what? AR? Or is it MR? Uh, no, uh, no realities yet. Uh, none yet? Not okay. Yet. Okay. So, but pretty much, yeah, you could look into this. And of course, in addition, tangible interfaces. So it's a form of multimodal act that exploits the tactile modalities by giving physical form to digital information. It's pretty much cool, right? So um, then you have ubiquitous computing, as I mentioned a while back, wherein the personal computer has disappeared and it's replaced by a multitude of wireless, small computing devices embodied in everyday objects. So you could create like what? smart clothes and those things, right? You could, uh, it's a good reason for CS students to work with fashion design students, right? We do have like um, Arduino Uno's, Raspberry Pis, uh, the Lotus flower, which would actually be used to make what? Smart clothes, for example, okay? And these are like, what? My final words already. So the idea behind multimodal design is to combine multiple modalities in order to improve the user experience, right? Um, you could, our target could actually be what? The persons with disabilities as well, right? I mean, they couldn't be able to function um, and use the gadget as is, right? So if you're thinking of like creating something, then there was this app that actually taught the blind to read from the mobile phone, right? So using Braille. So it's more tactile, tactile in nature. I mean, the surface of the phone is flat. However, if it touches it, it actually vibrates. So you'd be able to read something from the phone, aside from, of course, using audio, right? And one thing that you need to consider as well is it's important to remember that users have a preconceived set of expectations. 
these are what we call your mental models, right? For how an interaction should occur. So it's like by default, if I touch my touchpad and then swipe up, then pretty much the page should scroll down, right? So those are what the mental models. I mean, by default, we're already trained to do things and stuff. So it's actually good that if we create an alternative, the results would actually be the same and not something new so that the users would actually not be confused in a way, right? Um, chat box and voice user interfaces or what we call conversational user interfaces, pretty much a good thing to look into. So of course, when you talk about chatbots, definitely you have to learn about AI, right? Um, for voice and user interfaces, of course, NLP, natural language processing. It's also good to learn about computer vision. And yeah, to expand your boundaries, you join online communities, right? Such as like what? Google developer groups, which you are in right now, GitHub, which we force you to join <laughs> from semester one, right? You could actually go for what? Check your um, ask answers to your homeworks, assignments for in Stack Overflow, Hacker News, Hashnode, learn some new stuff in Free Code Camp, Code Project, and those things. Okay, so with that, I guess I end my talk. Hopefully, you learned something even if in a very short time. And hopefully um, this broadens your mind into thinking of what? Brothers and better solutions for the society. Because our role as IT students, computer science or um, um, other fields pretty much, but in the field of IT, we're problem solvers. Right, so I'm um, looking forward to yeah working with you all soon, and I'll see you when I see you. Thank you. Right. Oh, thank you so much, Sir Jude, for that uh, the talk on uh, multimodal HCI. It was really interesting. Um, like, to, and also, thank you so much for the final project inspiration, sir. Uh, uh, um, it, it really could be like a, an interesting topic for all of us. Um, I love how you connected. Yeah, um, um, I'd like to make a suggestion. So if you'd like, let's say, for example, you, you work on a project, right? And then let's say, for example, you've got like different classes, different classes, all of those classes have projects. So it's actually nice if you work on one, right? I don't know if you could, if it's possible. <laughs> but yeah, if the requirements are pretty much similar, then feel free to do such a thing. Well, but I guess it, ha thing. it happens more to the yeah, semester three, four students. Yeah, but for semester one, no. Not yet, perhaps. Okay. That's so cool, sir. I hope we can do that also. <laughs> um, I also love how you like connected uh, it to everyday applications, such as like um, the virtual assistants, Google's virtual assistant, mm -hmm. Siri, and also the Shake Shake phone one. I believe uh, Line Messenger also has that feature. Okay. Uh, right, Philip? I think so, yeah. I also was like very uh interested to uh, sir. I think you I, I just noticed I think you like this near automata a lot, sir, because I can see it in your presentation. Well, I nah, because we're talking about human computer interface. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm just kidding. Okay, I like to be NA2. <laughs> Except 9S. <laughs> no, no. Yep, yep. But near is really nice. It's a really nice game. I mean, I haven't played the game uh, myself, but I've heard very good reviews about it. 